in this uh, video we'll uh, start with the shoulder joint so this is a model for the shoulder joint uh, starting with acromyoclavicular joint uh, bones and wall in formation of this joint is the clavicle and the scapula articulating surface uh, includes acromial end of the clavicle and the acromion process of the scapula together they form the acromyoclavicular joint and the, it is a synovial plane joint then coming to the next that is the capsule is attached to the margins of this bones then next is the ligaments superior and inferior acromyoclavicular ligaments are present in this over here and uh, one accessory ligament that is the coracoclavicular ligaments runs from the coracoid process to the surface below the clavicle then the synovial membrane lines the capsule capsule lines the margins of the bones and synovial membrane lines the capsule uh, the nerve which supplies this joint is the suprascapular nerve and the movements include uh, involve gliding movement when the scapula is elevated or depressed or when scapula sorry uh, movements include uh, gliding when a clavicle is uh, elevated or depressed and scapula is rotated uh, clinical importance um, in this case uh, acromyoclavicular injuries uh, acromial uh, end uh, goes upward like this it goes upward and gets dislocated and up, uh, it comes above the uh, scapula's acromial process like lateral end is ka dislocate ho ke acromion process ke upar aa jata hai is condition ko bola jata hai acromyoclavicular injuries then next is the acromyoclavicular dislocation uh, what happens in this case is uh, due to the external force like playing uh, football or blocking uh, there is the actually acromion process uh, gets beneath uh, goes beneath the lateral end of the uh, clavicle like it goes below this and uh, this condition is uh, results in the tearing of the coracoclavicular ligament this condition is also known as a shoulder separation so this is all about the acromyoclavicular joint uh, bones involved in the formation of the shoulder joint as the humerus and the scapula articulating surface include the rounded head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula which is a shallow cavity then the next that is a type it is a synovial ball and socket joint then the third point that is the capsule capsule is attached surrounding this head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity and is attached to the margins of the glenoid cavity and the next point that is the ligaments uh, three bands of the gleno glenohumeral ligaments are attached over here like this and the uh, next ligament that is the transverse humeral ligament stretches from the greater tuberosity to the lesser tuberosity then a coracohumeral ligament strengthens the capsule and stretches from the root of the coracoid process to the greater tuberosity of the humerus then an accessory ligament that is the coracoacromial ligament is extends between the coracoid process to the acromion then um, next point that is the nerve supply um, axillary and the uh, suprascapular nerve supplies this joint then the movements involved in this uh, joint is the flexion second is the extension uh, circumduction adduction abduction and also uh, lateral rotation coming to the clinical importance of this joint um, actually the shoulder uh, dislocation is the most commonly occurred fracture so when the head of the humerus uh, moves laterally uh, or uh, moves uh, away from the glenoid cavity it is known as a anterior inferior dislocation and uh, when the head of the humerus moves to the back of the scapula then this is known as a posterior dislocation so this is all about the shoulder joint thank you Thank mm -hmm. you.